And they said, well, people are somewhat free on Sunday. We can do a Sunday afternoon meal. Go with it. And then it just, like Monday night, the, uh, the, the, the community center over here used to have a Monday night meal and they closed for a while. And while they closed, they said, who can do that Monday? Well, we'll add that, we'll add Monday night. And then a, another woman who actually has her own little social service, Laura Sam says, well, I'll do Tuesday and Thursday lunch. And Ann Weeks, who, who, who's a pastoral minister, Catholic pastoral minister up in Hartfield said, well, I'd like to do a Wednesday and, and have my ladies bring soup. So I'll bring soup. So all of a sudden we added Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Laura Sams who does uh, two, uh, Thursday said, well, I want to do a Saturday. Well, she said, one Saturday. And then later on, somebody else said, well, I'll, I'll do a Friday. So that's what that, you have that schedule. Mm -hmm. Schedule didn't come because it was planned. It came because that's what the Lord wanted us to do, and that's what we're doing. How long will we do it? When will we do it? I don't know. But, uh, but, but the wonderful thing is, we, I'll show you something. Mike knows where we are, but most people going by here can't see the little sign on the, on, we used to have a sign right up, up here. But it was made for us by the art club of Walsh, the students, and they didn't think about weatherproofing. They just took uh, plywood and they made a nice, nice sign. Well, after three years, when we were remodeling here, we realized you can't hardly see that sign, so we have to take it down and we'll have to replace it. We can get around to replacing it. And this past week, the students from Walsh, they were coming here uh, and, and they go once a month, they come here and they said, well, we have some service money. We can do something. And so we talked it out and with Ann Weeks and she said, what we need to do is replace that sign that's been sitting over in my office in Hartville. So, okay, Walsh did it, Walsh is giving us the money. So it looks like that's what we're gonna do. What he said to do is, you know how you get people to do what you want? You ask, because it's a family. So if you're in your family and you need something from your brothers or sisters or mother, father, aunt, what do you do? Do you say, oh, I'm gonna pay you this, here's the buy bill? No, you ask, could you do this for me? Could you take me here? If God is a father, our Father who art in heaven, then we're all brothers and sisters. So the way we're supposed to act is different from the way the society acts, which is force. And it works. That's all I can say. We just keep our hand out. People know. They'll come and they'll say, could you use a, a little bit of money? Could you use a little of this? Could, I'll bring you some uh, materials. Fine. What do you need? Everything. <laughs> And that's all, I, I know it sounds naive, but it has worked for me. Mm -hmm. I'm in my 80th year and it's worked. So I guess I'm gonna keep doing it. Go find it.
to, I, I, I don't explain the word to people too much because it, it, they don't understand it, but the worker is called, it's a Catholic movement, but it's a Catholic anarchist radical movement. What does that mean? Not the words that most people think. Anarchist just means it doesn't have an official organization. We're organized, but there's not a regular systematic, here's the charge, but we organize ourselves for a project, okay. And radical simply means our activities correspond to the roots of the gospel. Radical just means the roots. And so that's what we have all around here. It's the roots of the gospel. We're not concerned about the organization and all the externals and stuff like that. It's just that we're supposed to be care, show care and concern for people. That's what we do. <laughs> okay. So that's why it's called that. And uh, so uh, we, we identify with, we've come from the Catholic tradition, but no one here is Catholic except me standing here right now. But it doesn't matter because we fundamentally are Christian, meaning act like Jesus. That's it. And the only reason we're able to do this is because of a relationship with the institutional church. But it's not with the institutional Catholic church that most people know because here in this town, people know the Catholic church that's right up the street here, St. Joseph's, or the one that's over Regina Chaley over in the, in the more affluent section. This was a Byzantine Catholic church. Most people don't even know that that exists, but it's actually a Catholic church in union with Rome, but it's not organized like the, the Latin Rite Catholic church. The Catholic church has six major rites, six major ways of being Catholic, but the only one people know are the one that 90% of Catholics are, which is the Latin Rite, the Roman Rite, but all the others are equally, and so this is the Romanian uh, right, which is part of the well, it's Romanian part of church, which is part of the Byzantine or the Greek Catholic right. It's called complicated here. <laughs> but uh, what happened was, I was a friend of the bishop of the Romanian Catholics, uh, who his his uh, uh, head, his his place uh, where he had is, is in Canton, St. George's off Forty Fourth Street. Uh, so I. I, uh, I knew him, we were friends, uh, and then one day he came to me and he said, Joe, you come from uh, some alliance. I said, yes. He said, well, I need some help. I said, what help do you need, John? He said, well, I, I've got to close my church there. I said, what church? He said, St. Theodore's. <clears throat> if you go down that alley, you'll see. There's no reason for you to have done it, but if you go down there, there's a nice little church at the other end, mm -hmm. a nice brick church, really nice. Well, it's it's the former Episcopal Church, which was replaced by the Episcopal Church over there near Mount Union, and the Byzantine Catholics took that church until the numbers went down. And so Bishop Botine has a real care and concern for Christianity, and he said, Joe, we still have to be of service, but I don't have anybody to be of service to the community, and I don't want to ch close the, 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 the church so much. So he said, I need to start a Catholic worker, because he knew what a Catholic worker was. <clears throat> okay, so this was, he said this to me in 2010. So since it took us about three years to get going, to get it going, you had to tell people what the Catholic worker was, they didn't know what it was. We got going in 2013, and so, and then sometimes we got changes. We had somebody in charge, and and they left, and so this is where we are now, and and, it, and it's working out. And we added, we started with one meal. The bishop said, "Hey, find out what the community needs. Don't just decide this is what we're going to do." Well, we found out that people needed food during the week, you know. So he said, "Okay, let's find a day they don't have one." And it was Sunday they didn't. Huh? You're gonna have to turn your mic up. Okay. <clears throat> You need it. There you go. Is that better? Uh-huh. Okay. So I said, well, then we found out there wasn't a meal on Sunday. 